Steve Roney, uh, Associate Professor, Clinical, Poultry Diagnostic Research Service. My appointment is 60% service and 40% teaching, and I primarily do diagnostic and field service and uh, disease problem solving in the field. The concept that we now have antibiotic-free chicken is a total misnomer. Um, all chicken meat for years, 50 years plus, has been antibiotic-free because it's been under USDA inspection and under withdrawal time so that any antibiotics that were used were used judiciously and according to government regulations with proper withdrawal time so that the meat had negligible to no uh, limits in, or no residue in the meat. Um, now with the new um, marketing of antibiotic free there is a perception by the public that in the past there were there were antibiotics in the meat and now there are not which is uh, totally false yeah why why are organic or antibiotic free or raised without antibiotics or natural birds why are they um, in more demand in high-end restaurants and in areas where uh, actually people have higher income number one is they can afford uh, those that kind of food um, uh, number two is that uh, there's just a uh, total lack of education of the public of what those terms mean. And again, it implies that in the past there have been issues with antibiotics in meat, not only poultry but other meats, when actually they have not been because of government regulations. So in my mind it's a high-end diet of people that are able to afford that kind of food. Uh, unfortunately, I do feel like that it is not fair to the lower income people who cannot afford to pay these extra prices and may become difficult for them to find the cheaper or less expensive meats uh, that are raised with conventional uh, methods. As far as hormones, uh, there never have been uh, added hormones in poultry meat. Uh, they never will be. There's no such product. In fact, they don't even work well in the avian species. So that's number one, it's not done. Uh, number two on antibiotics, I just tell them that we never had an issue with antibiotics in meat, uh, that it is a marketing ploy that is uh, used by some companies and our, maybe we're our own our, uh, worst enemy in the industry in that we tend to say that we have no hormones added or no antibiotics in our, in our meat when uh, in fact uh, uh, no one has ever. So number one, as far as marketing and using uh, unsound statements just to grasp the, the public's attention. I don't think that's responsible as an industry. But on the other hand, should we strive for judicious use of antibiotics, for less usage of antibiotics, just like we should strive for less usage of any um, uh, resource, uh, whether it's uh, bedding or, or, or feed or, or water, uh, yes, we should strive to get better. But to do everything at one time just because of an uninformed public pressure to me uh, has not been uh, a real responsible way for the industry to go. The emergence of resistant bacteria to human um, antibiotics because of the use in food animal, the data is, uh, is really very thin on proving that. Uh, there is some association that has been released by CDC. Uh, that they feel like perhaps that some of the uh, uh, drugs in human medicine are less effective uh, due to the, some similar type products being used in food animal medicine. However, in my mind, they fail to take into account the misuse of those particular human drugs in human medicine. Uh, but not being critical, uh, I still think that there has been uh, very little concrete evidence that at least the, the, the drugs that we've used in the past five years have had any effect on the resistance of bacteria to the modern human uh, antibiotics. Uh, what we use now primarily to prevent disease in birds, and we're mostly concerned about diseases in the intestinal tract, we use uh, uh, antibiotics that have very little or to no use in human medicine. They're very large molecules. They're not absorbed into the intestinal tract. Uh, they work just inside the bird, and they are not, uh, they never get into the meat of the bird, so therefore uh, they could not have any sort of uh, action carried to, to people in the, uh, in the market. Um, still, that is a debatable topic, and there's still a lot of research being done on it. Unfortunately, the public pressure to stop the use of antibiotics uh, may preclude us from doing much of that research because the loss of sales of uh, antibiotics is going to uh, stop the funding from being able to do those kind of studies.
Well, the, the development of superbugs from the use of antibiotics in, in food animal, um, there's no sound scientific data on that. Most people have an opinion and uh, an idea that uh, perhaps superbugs might emerge if we use no antibiotics ever in any food animal. Uh, maybe if we didn't use antibiotics at all because we find bacteria in frozen tundra is 10,000 years old that is resistant to some antibiotics. So resistance and emergence of superbugs and, and uh, those kind of pathogens uh, uh, on the bacteria side uh, is a very complex factor. And it's actually, uh, there are people that know a lot more about that than I do, but in my opinion, uh, the, the, what we do in, and the way we judiciously use antibiotics in food animals, at least in poultry, uh, is probably not the major factor in forming any sort of superbug in human medicine. As far as uh, uh, statistics on uh, the number of birds that will die uh, that have used preventative antibiotics versus ones that have not, uh, that data exists to some extent. It's uh, difficult to compare because there's still a very small amount of the, the birds that are raised without antibiotics as compared to the birds that still are raised with preventative antibiotics in the feed. However, if you look at that over time, I suspect in, uh, in, in some situations you could have three to four times the mortality or dead birds in a, in a non-prevented flock than in, in a prevented flock. Uh, if you, uh, especially if you're not allowed to use uh, treatment or therapeutic type antibiotics to stop a disease spread. As far as um, animals that become sick because they did not receive a, a prevention or a preventative antibiotic, uh, it's very sad to walk into a house where you, where you know had you used a, a low level of this product, even at certain times during the grow out, you probably would not have this condition that is now killing uh, maybe up to a half to 1% uh, of your birds per day. And in the absence of being able to use another antibiotic to, uh, to treat those birds or to stop the mortality, it's, uh, it's very frustrating just to stand and watch them die. Uh, we use uh, different things. We try organic acids. We try a lot of things to acidify the gut to hopefully uh, maybe lower the level of the, uh, uh, of the bacteria uh, to the point that maybe less birds will die. But in any event, uh, it's frustrating when you know you could stop the outbreak in a day or two and there's not much you can do about it. In our present state of management, uh, we have not been um, totally successful in being able to raise birds in a, in a very healthy manner without the use of um, uh, pr uh, preventative or prophylactic antibiotics. So in my mind, those birds could possibly um, be more of a risk of contamination uh, just from the birds being less healthy than birds that have been raised under conventional practices. Uh, there has been more and more research done to go uh, to raising birds without antibodies because of public pressure, but as of right now, we've not, uh, we've not been able to do that and have a healthier bird. In fact, we have a less healthy bird. Substitution for previously used antibiotics or antibiotics that are, that are being phased out in food animal. Uh, quite a few products uh, could probably, if I tried to name 15 different type products that are being used to try to take the place of, uh, of the old traditional uh, feed additive preventative and uh, disease prevention antibiotics. Um, as far as I can tell right now, the, uh, the key to that has not been found. Uh, many people have tried many different uh, products, whether it's essential oils or whether it's uh, prebiotics or probiotics or various bacteria, spores. Uh, what have you, application methods can be a problem with uh, different products, uh, cost is a problem with some, and uh, really the, uh, uh, the effectiveness and the, uh, the uh, continuity of, of action and uh, consistency has not been found to be anywhere near those that we've had with antibiotics in the past. So yes, there's quite a search for that. Uh, obviously, uh, with uh, uh, if you had a product that would protect the bird against becoming ill or sick uh, as well as an antibiotic and you could sell that product and it was consistent then uh, I think it would be a good find but as far as I can tell right now that has not been done. 
alternatives to prevention, disease prevention antibiotics, I think uh, people will continue to try to find that silver bullet. Um, I, I don't think we're there yet. Uh, there's a lot of uh, speculation. I mean, ideally you would think that you could take the organism that produces bacitracin, which is a, a great uh, disease prevention drug, and you could take that organism and feed it to an animal and they would produce it naturally inside the intestine, but it doesn't seem to work that way. Um, also with a lot of the uh, other bacteria that we'd like to use to, uh, to colonize the gut to help the bird um, fight off disease, those bacteria are destroyed during our feed making processes with the heat that we use to make pellets and, uh, and to sterilize the feed. So right now it's a, it's a difficult uh, situation because uh, we just really don't have anything as good as the, uh, as the old feed additive uh, uh, disease prevention. So far, we've not been able to find anything that is consistent in preventing disease at the times that we know that our livestock are going to be challenged. We've not found anything as good at preventing disease as antibiotics are. We have tried a lot of different uh, acids, a lot of different probiotics, prebiotics, uh, different uh, concoctions of, uh, of um, uh, products, but uh, so far we can't find anything as consistent as the antibiotics are. Well, everything we do to produce food has a carbon footprint. Uh, what uh, the uninformed pub public would like is for to have individual birds that walk on grass under in the shade and it's always sunny and it never rains and uh, you could produce that bird, although they probably wouldn't want to slaughter it and eat it. But when we produce animals, or even actually plants for human consumption. You always have to use something to get something. And when we uh, do away with any sort of products that help our efficiency in conversion of renewable resources such as corn and soybeans that we use for feed, when we lo lose the ability to efficiently convert those into meat, then we are costing ourselves more money and more loss in our environment um, uh, that we're trying to so hard to conserve for the future. Uh, so as far as eating the meat from chickens grown either with or without antibiotics, there should be no difference uh, to public health. Well, we actually never used disease prevention antibiotics just for the fun of it. We used them because they work very well and prevent disease, which is what you want to do. Unfortunately, we can't raise each chicken in a 10 by 10 foot room, so we have to put them rather in uh, close confinement. And, and by doing that, you have the opportunity for disease to spread rather rapidly in the case of, uh, of a disease situation. Uh, preventive antibiotics uh, prevent that from happening. Uh, we use those for many years. Uh, they also, by preventing disease, also increase the growth rate and the feed efficiency of those birds and actually mistakenly became uh, labeled as growth promoters when in actuality they were dis disease prevention uh, antibiotics. So uh, once you get a disease in a closely confined uh, group of animals or people or anything else, it's much more difficult to control and to stop that than to prevent it. So once you get uh, the disease in a, in a group of broilers or, or chickens, then uh, uh, if you have no antibiotics that you can use for therapeutic purposes to treat those birds, uh, the, actually the infected birds just have to die out and the disease has to become self-limiting, which in my mind goes against the veterinarian's oath of, uh, of protecting the, against suffering in animals. Well, the USDA, uh, well, actually, the FDA regulates feed additive antibiotics by uh, placing a withdrawal time uh, on any antibiotic that's used in a food animal feed. Uh, the withdrawal time is based upon extensive research showing how long it takes for that animal to eliminate that product from the body to the point that it's zero or negligible um, residue. Uh, to say zero res residue with the kind of uh, very sensitive testing we have now is difficult to do because you can almost find uh, one part per billion of almost anything, whether you use a product or not. So we say that there's a tolerance level. Uh, but uh, in, in, in any way, the, the, uh, 
the amount of, uh, of, of antibiotic in the meat is, is negligible according to those withdrawal times. And then it's USDA's responsibility to set those same withdrawal times on any uh, medication that is used uh, either bought over the counter or on the, on the order of uh, a prescription of a veterinarian. And those withdrawal times are set the, way, the same way with a lot of research by the company that sells that product that they will be uh, less than the um, uh, allowable limit of residue in that, in that meat. And actually, uh, uh, by using no antibiotics or using the antibiotic with the proper withdrawal time, sometimes there's really no difference in the amount of residue that's in, in the meat.